Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now if you clicked on this video, we are obviously talking about getting undergraduate research experience and the best strategies to actually accomplish this because I know it is way easier said than done. Now I am actually an anthropology major and an evolutionary medicine minor at UCLA. So I like to think that I kind of have had a taste of both the STEM side of things and the social science side of things. So now if any of this sounds appealing to you, definitely stick around so you can get my top five tips in getting getting involved in undergraduate research. Now, my first number one recommended method to actually get your foot in the door when it comes to getting research experience as an undergraduate student is contacting professors. Now, when it comes to contacting professors, there's definitely a protocol that I think you should follow. First of all, I think you need to look into the department that you actually want to be studying in. So maybe you want to be doing anthropology research, maybe you want to be doing chemistry research. And once you've made this decision of which department you actually want to be working in, there should be a page with the staff all listed um, and go through, and I'm not kidding, click on every single one of the professors and read the little blurb that they have written about themselves. Usually in this blurb, it talks about what they're interested in, what their research is, where they went to school. And hopefully by doing this, you can find a list of four or five professors that are extremely aligned with you and your interests. Now once you have this list of your top five professors, I want you to go in and find a paper, a research paper that they have been a part of. Um, maybe they were the lead on this paper, maybe they were just a supplemental contact, but regardless, I want you to go in and actually read through a paper that they were a part of. The next thing you need to do is contact the professor saying, hey, I read your paper on XYZ and I found it really, really interesting. It's actually super aligned with my interests on ABC. And for this reason, I think we would be a great match. However you think is the best way to word this, um, you do you, my friend. And then go in with a follow-up question saying, do you happen to know anyone that has research opportunities in this arena that I might be able to get involved in? Or also, if you already know that they do have a research lab, ask them how you can get involved because that's what actually happened to me. I knew a professor that I had had a research lab, so I contacted him asking how I could get involved. And the last tip that I have in the contacting professors arena is do not be afraid to follow up. Chances are your professor is a professor for a reason. This is a very competitive job, meaning it's entirely likely, entirely possible that they're very known for what they do. So your email will probably get lost in the masses. I hate to say it, but you have to be okay with following up and saying, hey, not sure if you saw my email from a week ago, but blah, 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 blah. And I think after three times, if you haven't heard back from them, it's safe to say that maybe you're not ever gonna hear back from them and move on to a different professor. Okay, so my next tip, it's probably not for everyone, but I have absolutely seen people find success in getting research experience through this avenue, and that is attending your professor's office hours. Now this mostly applies to professors you actually have. In the first tip that I just gave you, you don't have to have taken a course with them, but to go to their office hours, you kind of do. But during their office hours, what you can do is go, I don't know, ask them a question about the homework or a question about the lecture. But I will say, do not immediately say, hey, like I didn't know how to solve question 2B and then say, hey, by the way, do you have any research like opportunities for me? No, it's very important that you actually build a relationship with the professors before asking them for this favor. And I think after you've built this relationship with that professor, they know who you are, they know your name, uh, then you can progress and say, hey, do you happen to know any research opportunities that are related to this? You don't have to ask them to be a part of their lab or if they have a lab. Because they're an expert in the field, they probably know who you should be talking to, so then you can get your foot in the door and be the next PhD expert in whatever it is that you wanna study and talk about. Now this next tip I'm very proud of because I don't think you're gonna find it anywhere else, and that is your TAs are your best friend. Something that I don't think a lot of people realize is TAs are, I mean, obviously they're master's students, they're PhD students, but at the same time as being your TA, they are conducting their own research so they can graduate with their degree. So what can happen in the TA's research is there's all these really, really, really annoying little things that they have to figure out. Maybe it's coding a certain set of data, or maybe it's going and passing out flyers to get participants in their study, whatever it is. And it's things that like they do not have to do and how great would it be if they had someone else do it for them. And what you can do is actually talk to your TAs and see if there's any way that you can help facilitate their research and move their research along. Now, I actually had an experience my junior year where I was taking evolutionary psychology and I adored my TA. And when the quarter came to an end, I emailed her. I was like, hey, I'm really curious about this topic 
topic and I might want to go to grad school for it, would you be willing to meet with me and just talk about your experience? And she was so kind and was like, hey, absolutely, I'd love to meet with you. And so we had this Zoom call and it literally lasted two hours. And by the end of the Zoom call, not only had I had like the behind the scenes knowledge of grad school and spilling tea and what everything actually looks like when you are a student, um, but on top of that, she was like, hey, this is what my research is about. And I would love to offer you a spot working for me to help me get through some of this data. And on top of that, then I would get this opportunity to see if it's something I would actually want to do. All of this is to say building relationships with your TAs is such a great thing that you can do that I really don't think people are talking about. And I honestly feel so lucky to have them because they are this glimpse into what your future could actually look like. Now, my fourth tip is definitely the most challenging opportunity uh, to find because it is so context dependent, college dependent, but that tip is looking for research programs. Now, a lot of college institutions actually will offer specialized research programs within a certain department. So an example is at my school, we have a research program in the anthropology department and you have to apply to get into this program. And once you get into this program, you actually get your research question, not someone else's, not a professor's, your research question fully funded. Now, because of the huge benefits that come as a byproduct of these research programs, what ends up happening is it's very competitive. And that's why I'm not hesitant to put it on this list, but I do want to be really open with what you would be getting yourself into. Um, and that is potentially a lot of funding, potentially a huge time commitment, and just the awareness that there's a possibility that you may not get into the program that you want. Now what's awesome about these research programs is they tend to be perfectly structured so you can have the smoothest research experience possible. In my experience in the anthropology research program at my school, every quarter is committed to a different part of the research project. So like the first quarter would be a thorough literature review and then the next quarter would be a data collection quarter. I don't know why I can't remember. I'm literally still in the program. And then there's data processing and writing the thesis and everything comes just one step after another. And you have these mentors who are really there for you and they hold your hand and it's fantastic. The main thing that I absolutely adore about research programs is I personally believe that they're the best way to learn if this is actually what you want to do. So maybe you get this research question funded and you get this incredible opportunity to do whatever your heart's desire is in the research field, right? Well, maybe after two years, this isn't actually what you wanna do anymore. You go, whoa, I really didn't like this piece of the research project or other side of the coin, you absolutely love it and are completely ecstatic about what you want to do in the future. Or, or another thing, sorry I'm talking so much about this point, but it's because I have the most experience in this area. Another thing that can happen is when you get deeper into your research, you learn about a lot of other really similar research. So maybe it's in the same field, but it's about a like, different topic, if that makes sense. And while you're doing your research, you'll be like, whoa, actually I think this other really closely related topic is probably what I want to do. Because you learn about it as a byproduct of your own research. Again, I hope that makes sense. And the last thing I want to say about this fourth tip is just go for it. Don't let the stats scare you. Don't let everyone telling you that you're not going to get in scare you. Don't let yourself telling you that you're not going to get in scare you because the worst thing that you can do is apply, not get in, and end up exactly where you are right now. Now, my last tip, tip number five, is do not be afraid to look for research opportunities outside of your institution. I think it's very easy to fall into this bubble that a lot of colleges create for you, which in so many ways is such a good thing. But when it comes to research, it could be a really good idea to actually pop that bubble and look for things outside of your institution. So this could be looking for research experience in a museum. This could be looking for research experience in a biotech lab, in a hospital. I don't know exactly what that looks like for you, but I do think it's really important that if you aren't finding a lot of success at your institution, it could be a really good idea to push your out of your comfort zone and seek something out. I think also with these opportunities, it can be really easy to tell yourself that, oh, you aren't qualified. Oh, I can't do it. Why would they hire me? Big time imposter syndrome. But again, the worst thing that you can do is apply and not get in and be exactly where you are right now. So do not say you don't have the qualifications or maybe they're not even hiring. Okay. That's another thing. I don't know how I didn't say this earlier. Sometimes people are not looking for research assistance, but if you tell them that they need a research assistant, it's entirely possible that they could hire you. One of the professors that I work for, he wasn't actively looking for research assistance. I was like, hi, 
I'm obsessed with your research, how do I get involved? And next thing I know, I'm a part of his lab. Sometimes you don't even know what you're looking for until it's right there in front of you. I know you didn't come here for some deep philosophical moments, but that is clearly what I'm giving you. <laughs> now those are my five tips when it comes to getting undergraduate research experience. Please just put yourself out there. That's the best advice that I can give anyone as I go into my senior year. The best and most success that I've had is when I push myself out of my comfort zone. I quickly did want to say if you have had any success Success in the research field, whether that's undergraduate, graduate, high school, I don't know. Please tell me about it in the comment section down below because this channel has become such a great resource for striving academics, striving anthropologists, and I am just so grateful for everything that you guys inform me about in the comment section. And if you're looking for more tips, go check the comment section out because chances are there's something down there for you. And lastly, if you guys want to hear about my anthropology research, please let me know. I will say that I cannot actually disclose what I'm doing because that just like violates the entire research process for so many different reasons. But there are things like anthropology research in general, what that looks like within the different subfields or specific subfield, depending on what you guys are interested in. Please just let me know and I would love to tell you exactly what that looks like and some of my experience with research within the anthropology field because it is quite fascinating and I clearly have a huge passion for it. Now, I think that is all I have to say to you. I definitely talked longer to today than I normally do. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and I will see you all next Sunday. All right. Bye you guys.